Good morning. Happy Sunday. Hope you're well. Dressing gown is on. Kids are up but playing. So I have a little bit of time before they rise and shine. So I thought I'd jump on and talk about something that went on the other day. And and it was in one of our Kickstart um, one-to-ones for our 28-day Kickstart. And one of the ladies mentioned that she um, started kind of looking at the calories of her food. Just, just kind of having a look. Morning, Diane. Give me a hello. Give me a hi if you're coming in. So she started looking at the calories of foods. Um, but at that time, she was actually doing slim fast. And what she noticed was when she looked at the calories, she could have Weetabix, which was less calories than the slim fast. Then she noticed that at lunchtime, she could have a sandwich and it was less calories than the slim fast. And it was like, I don't get it. Surely, surely slim fast should be lower in calories. Now, it's a it's an interesting point because that's where you've got to look at how does slim fast actually work. Despite what people think, it's not because it starves you or anything like that. It actually works on the on the premise that if you have say three shakes a day, you'll be at about a thousand calories or so, maybe a bit more. But you've got structure. So you've got structure in that you're having three shakes a day. I'm not saying have it, by the way. I'm just saying this is how it works. So you can what you can take from it. You've got three shakes a day. You would make no more choices. You've made a decision to go. No, I don't snack. I just have my three shakes. So it works on the premise that you won't snack. You don't have to make loads of decisions because decision fatigue is a big thing of why a lot of people fall off the wagon. If you've got to go right, I've had greens, reds, browns. I don't know whatever. This funny points, this many points. Sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming for some people, and they just go, you know what? Stop this. I'm thinking too much about food, and that's and that's where it can be quite confusing. And then people end up actually just having so many decisions to make. You throw in life, kids, family, all these things work. There's just only so <laughs> such amount of willpower and decisions you you're kind of willing to make sometimes. And often, rightly or wrongly, food, exercise, the first thing to just go. You know what? I can't be bothered today. Because at the end of the day, we do have to work. At the end of the day, we do have to spend time with family, make look after loved ones. And our values probably at that time will rate them higher. Rightly or wrongly. Morning, Jill. So if you think about what the take home from that is, in that, that all these diets, all these special shakes, etc. All as they do is give you a plan. They give you a plan in that you don't have to think. You have to make fewer decisions. So take that from it. How can you eat, still eat the food you want so you're not depriving yourself, have some structure, but have the flexibility at the same time? Because you can, as she's found. Oh, I can actually have my Weetabix. I can actually have a sandwich at lunchtime without feeling like, oh, I've had bread now. Because see how damaging that thought is. Oh, I've had bread now, so I might as well just screw it. I've only had a sandwich. I know that's rubbish. Whereas how we feel when we have that shake might be that, I feel better. I'm I'm on it. So, so what can you do? Well, when you look at big studies that look at you know ha- people who have lost weight and kept it off, so they look at people who have lost ten kilos or more. Morning, Norma. Ten kilos or more and kept it off for more than a year. What these people do in terms of their food, they do lots of things, but what they tend to do is they make real few decisions with their food. And I'm not saying be boring here. If you consider the slim fast example, what they often do is they'll go, right, I'm going to have, today I'm going to have eggs for breakfast. Tomorrow I'm going to have eggs for breakfast. Wednesday I'm going to have eggs for breakfast. Next day, eggs for breakfast. Or porridge for breakfast, porridge for breakfast, porridge for breakfast. They, they make a plan which is quite just simple. They seem to just be very structured and organised. And I'm not saying do that every day, but you could have like, right, one day this day, one day that day. And then they have a plan so they have fewer decisions to make. Then they might go into, okay, I'm going to plan my snacks today. So rather than just rely on willpower, I know today I'm I'm going to have two bags of crisps at 2 p.m. I know that X amount of calories. In this instance, it was pom bears. Cannot believe how low calorie they are. Anyway, um, what it does, though, is, like I said, one, having that calorie awareness changes your relationship with food in that you can be like, you know what, there's no bad foods. There's no foods I should put on a pedestal. How can I eat to be 
give my body the nutrition it needs to get more energy, have the energy to do the exercise, which will make me fitter, make me stronger, get the things I want, getting up and down off the floor, walking upstairs without being out of breath, fit into these clothes by creating a calorie deficit, improve my health, whatever it is, we can start to look at food as something that is actually something that I need to, to have to make me stronger, fitter, and allow my body to do what it's capable of doing, rather than something like, right, how can I restrict myself today? And really, you can get away from that by having that calorie awareness, two, not being so flexible that you just say, I'll eat everything in moderation. That's good advice for some people, but for some people, I hate to say it, but it's the worst advice ever. Because when you tell someone to eat in moderation, your moderation is so different to my moderation. And sometimes when you have a little bit of structure within this, I'm going to snack on X, Y, Z. It could be, you know, that's why some people who fasting work, it works well for. They, they like the structure of, I don't eat after 7 p.m. I just don't do it. I have carbs at these meals. Whatever it is, you've got to come up with your thing that just, just allows you to make less, fewer decisions. Like, for example, I know that if I say to myself, like a, a subconscious way for me to lower my food intake, if I really want to, if I want to lose a bit of weight, if I want to get a bit leaner or whatever, would be protein every meal, which I do anyway now, glass of water when I wake up and before every meal, two, four, seven different vegetables over the day. If I get them things, like the water, seven different vegetables, protein every meal, I'll subconsciously eat less anyway. If I then throw in no snacking, and then throw in, if I really want to do it, only carbs at my dinner and my tea. It essentially allows me to have, and I'm not saying this is any special, this is just creating a calorie deficit for me without actually counting anything. What it allows me to do is then enjoy dinner. So like last night we had sea bass, homemade chips, and super filling, you know, really good. But it allows me to eat kind of socially, not be kind of, oh, I have to eat separately, etc. Because it allows me to fit it in, control the meals I can. I've got structure. I don't really have to think about my food. Don't really have to count anything. And I'm keeping that structure in. I'm making fewer decisions. We can co go into a whole other area here with keeping busy, boredom eating, stress eating, tiredness. But I won't go into that now. More on that another day. So I hope that helps. And yeah, Weetabix, sandwiches, Slim Fast. <laughs> if you bottle up a sandwich with Slim Fast on it, maybe that would make us feel different anyway hope that helps let me know your key take home from this um and any questions as always do let me know also we will be doing a another the other week i did a free kickstart um seven day kickstart we will be doing a free five day kickstart from next week so it'll be a week on monday the 22nd of june for the reason that a lot of the ladies who were on it maybe didn't complete it as much as they wanted to. But also, we got such great feedback that we're going to do it again. And I feel like it's a good time to do it with things not quite open yet, but slowly opening up. And to give people that structure, routine that someone kind of wants to kickstart a bit and getting back into their good habits. Because if you can, if you can put something into place now... When, you know, things are starting to open up again, maybe you've got a bit more, more freedom, fit it into your lifestyle now as you start to kind of get back to some normality, hopefully, then it's going to help bridge the gap between getting into our, our habits again. So I will put the link for that. If you want to register for that, it's completely free. Like I said, five days up in the description. Any details on any, inf any questions, let me know. And we shall go from there. Have a late, great day. Happy Sunday. I will get out of my dressing gown at some point and speak soon. Take care.